In this video, we will investigate electron transfer or redox reactions, which is just one type of the many types of chemical reactions. During a redox reaction, one or more electrons are transferred from one reactant to another. The process of losing electrons is called oxidation. In this example, substance A loses an electron and is oxidized. The process of gaining electrons is called reduction. Substance B gains an electron and is reduced. Note that if substance B is a positive ion, it might be reduced to a neutral particle instead of a negative ion as shown here. Oxidation of one species is always accompanied by reduction of another species. The two go hand in hand and occur at the same time. Since both processes occur simultaneously, the term redox describes these reactions. Red for reduction and ox for oxidation. We can use the handy acronym oil rig to remember that oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons. Here is an example of a redox reaction. At the beginning of the reaction, zinc metal is placed in a solution containing copper 2 plus ions. During the reaction, zinc loses two electrons and forms the zinc 2 plus ion in solution. Zinc is oxidized. As the reaction proceeds, so the blue color of the copper 2 plus solution would fade and copper would be deposited as a dark solid on the remaining zinc metal. The electrons lost by zinc are gained by or transferred to the copper 2 plus ions. Copper is reduced to its elemental form. We can break up a redox reaction into two half reactions or half equations. One for oxidation and one for reduction. We can write the oxidation half reaction like this. We can see that on the right hand side the electrons have been separated or removed from zinc since it was oxidized. We can write the reduction half reaction like this. We can see on the left hand side that electrons combine with the copper 2 plus ion since it is reduced. Overall, electrons are transferred from zinc metal to copper ions. The oxidizing agent is the species that causes the oxidation of another species by taking electrons from it. Since the copper 2 plus ion gained or received electrons from zinc, causing zinc to be oxidized, the copper 2 plus ion is the oxidizing agent. The reducing agent is the species that causes the reduction of another species by giving electrons to it. Since zinc metal transferred electrons to the copper 2 plus ions, causing them to be reduced, zinc is the reducing agent. In our redox reaction example, we deduced that zinc lost electrons and was oxidized since it went from a neutral state to a positive charge. We also deduced that copper gained electrons and was reduced since its charge went from a positive 2 plus state to a neutral state. In some redox reactions, dedicating which species is oxidized and which is reduced is more challenging. We must therefore identify the oxidation state or oxidation number of each element in each species and investigate how these values change during the reaction to identify which species is reduced and which is oxidized. The oxidation state on an atom is a hypothetical charge if we treated all of its bonds as if they were ionic or if all the atoms were ions. Oxidation numbers can be positive, negative or zero. The magnitude and sign of the oxidation number helps us identify the degree to which an atom is oxidized. Here are the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. An element in its elemental state has an oxidation number of zero. In compounds, group 1 metals always have a plus 1 oxidation number, 
and group 2 metals always have a plus 2 oxidation number. Halogens are minus 1. Hydrogen at the top of group 1 is usually plus 1 unless bonded to a metal where it is minus 1. Oxygen is usually minus 2 except in peroxides where it is minus 1. And transition metals and most main group nonmetals have variable oxidation numbers depending on the compound they are in. The remaining rules are the sum of the oxidation numbers in a neutral compound is always equal to zero. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion equals the charge on the ion. Note that since there are four oxygen atoms, in this example, each with an oxidation number of minus two, together they contribute a total of minus eight. The oxidation number increases during oxidation. It becomes more positive or less negative. And the oxidation number decreases during reduction, becoming less positive or more negative. Let's use these rules to identify which species is oxidized and which is reduced in this reaction. According to the oxidation number rules, potassium, which is in group one, must have a plus one oxidation number. The iodide ion has a minus one oxidation number. Hydrogen is always plus one when bonded to non-metals. And in hydrogen peroxide, since there are two hydrogen atoms, they together contribute plus two. Oxygen usually has an oxidation number of minus two, except in peroxides where it is minus one. And since there are two oxygen atoms in peroxide, we write minus two at the top. Elements in their elemental state have an oxidation number equal to zero, so we can write zero above this diatomic iodine. Potassium's oxidation number is unchanged. Hydrogen's oxidation number is unchanged. Iodine's oxidation number has increased. It has become less negative or more positive, and so potassium iodide is oxidized. Oxygen's oxidation number has decreased. It has become more negative, so hydrogen peroxide is reduced. Potassium iodide causes the reduction of hydrogen peroxide, and so potassium iodide is the reducing agent. Hydrogen peroxide causes the oxidation of potassium iodide, and so hydrogen peroxide is the oxidizing agent. In this example, we can see the progressive oxidation of a transition metal, resulting in varying possible oxidation states. In the first step, two electrons are lost, and in the second oxidation, one electron is lost. We have seen that oxidation is the loss of electrons or the increase in oxidation number. It can also be considered to be the gain of oxygen atoms. These two reactions are examples of the gain of oxygen. In the first equation, sulfur in sulfur dioxide gains oxygen and is oxidized. In the second equation, sodium gains oxygen and is oxidized. If we were to check the oxidation numbers in these equations, we would find that oxygen is reduced in both cases. We have also seen that reduction is the gain of electrons, or the decrease in oxidation number. However, it can also be considered to be the loss of oxygen, or the gain of hydrogen. These two reactions are examples of reduction of the non-oxygen element. In the first equation, carbon dioxide loses oxygen and so carbon is reduced. In the second equation, chlorine gains hydrogen and so is reduced. If we were to check the oxidation numbers, we would find that in equation one, oxygen is oxidized and in equation two, hydrogen is oxidized. You can pause the video at this point to examine these two slightly more complex examples of oxidation and reduction regarding oxygen or hydrogen loss or gain. 
Different elements have different tendencies to be either oxidized or reduced. Some elements are more easily oxidized than other elements, and some elements are more easily reduced. Metals tend to lose their outer electrons and be oxidized when they react. So the reactivity of a metal is a measure of its tendency to lose outer electrons and form positive ions. Since nonmetals gain the electrons lost by metals, metals are reducing agents. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons and be reduced when they react. Except for the noble gases, and except for hydrogen, which tends to lose an electron like the other elements in group 1. The reactivity of a nonmetal is a measure of its tendency to gain outer electrons and form negative ions. Since nonmetals gain electrons by removing electrons from another element during a reaction, some nonmetals can act as oxidizing agents. Let's investigate the differing ease with which different metals react and are oxidized. For example, the oxidation of group 1 metals, the alkali metals, is a rapid, spontaneous process. When a clean surface of a group 1 metal is exposed to oxygen in the air, it rapidly oxidizes to form a white layer of metal oxide. That is why alkali metals need to be stored under oil. All group 1 metals react energetically. They only need to lose one electron to make them stable. Relatively little energy is required to remove this one valence electron. Going down group 1, the reaction with oxygen gets more vigorous as there are more core shells shielding the valence electron from the nuclear pull and less energy is required to remove the valence electron. And so we say the reactivity of the metals increases going down the group. This reactivity trend is very noticeable when a piece of alkali metal is placed on the surface of water. Lithium pops and fizzes as it reacts, while cesium produces sparks and a small explosion is heard. A similar trend is found going down other groups containing metals. In general, going down a group, metal reactivity or ease of oxidation increases. However, this trend differs from left to right across a period. Transition metals are less reactive than the metals in groups 1 and 2. For example, rusting is a well-known oxidation reaction of the transition metal iron but this oxidation process occurs slowly. Going further to the right, we find some transition metals which do not react. These inert or unreactive metals include gold and platinum. The general trend across a period is decreasing reactivity or ease of oxidation from left to right or increasing reactivity from right to left. This is because going to the left across a period, so the nuclear charge decreases due to decreasing protons, and so less energy is required to remove valence electrons. Now let's investigate the differing ease with which different nonmetals react, excluding hydrogen and the noble gases. The halogens in group 17 are readily reduced. They need only one electron to fill their outer shell, but the ease with which they gain this electron during a reaction differs. Going up the group, there are fewer core shells and less shielding. So the attractive force from the nucleus for an incoming electron increases. In turn, reactivity increases. For example, the vigor with which the halogens are reduced when they react with hydrogen, increases going up the group. Fluorine reacts explosively, even in the dark and at very low temperatures, while iodine near the bottom of the group needs high temperatures and a catalyst to react. 
A similar trend is found going from left to right across a period. The reactivity of nonmetals increases. This is because of the increasing number of protons going from left to right and increasing nuclear attraction for an incoming electron. We can put the reactivity trends together on one periodic table like this. We need to know and understand these general reactivity trends on the periodic table, as this will help us deduce which element is oxidized in a redox reaction and which is reduced. Here is an example. In which beaker will a reaction occur? Write the redox equation that occurs. From the reactivity trends, we know that metal reactivity, or ease of oxidation, tends to decrease from left to right across the periodic table. Since calcium is further to the left than copper, it is more reactive than copper. This means that calcium will preferentially be oxidized and therefore copper will be reduced. So a redox reaction would occur in beaker A, and this is the redox equation. You might be wondering why, in a previous example we looked at, zinc is oxidized and copper is reduced in this redox reaction, instead of the other way around. Well, zinc's outer electron configuration is 4s2 3d10, and copper's is expected to be 4s2 3d9. However, an atom is more stable if its D subshell is either completely empty, half filled, or completely filled. And so one of copper's 4s electrons is used to fill the 3D sublevel, leaving copper with a stable outer electron configuration of 4s1 3D10. Then, when zinc reacts to form the zinc 2 plus ion, it loses both its outer electrons that is, its two 4s electrons. This leaves the zinc 2 plus ion with a full and stable D subshell. Since zinc achieves a stable state when it forms the 2 plus ion, zinc reacts readily. However, when copper loses two electrons to form a copper 2 plus ion, it is left with an incomplete D subshell. Since the state is less stable, than a completely filled D subshell, copper reacts less readily than zinc. So zinc is more reactive than copper, despite being further to the right on the period. Rest assured that you will always be given enough information to deduce the relative reactivities of elements which do not follow the general trends. From knowledge of reactivity trends or data given to us in a particular question, we could construct an activity or reactivity series, which is a list of elements in order of decreasing reactivity. Elements at the top of the list are readily oxidized and are strong reducing agents, while elements at the bottom are difficult to oxidize and are weak reducing agents. Be aware that the nonmetals hydrogen and carbon are often included in an activity series near the middle. It's time to summarize the main points we have learnt. We learnt that redox reactions involve the transfer of electrons. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, the gain of oxygen, or the loss of hydrogen. Reduction is the gain of electrons, the gain of hydrogen, or the loss of oxygen. A redox reaction can be written as two half equations, an oxidation and a reduction half equation. A reducing agent causes reduction of another species and an oxidizing agent causes oxidation of another species. Oxidation numbers increase during oxidation and decrease during reduction. Different elements display differing ease of oxidation or reduction. And finally, reactivity trends occur across periods and down groups of the periodic table.